So for now, our goal is going to be, I think, pretty modest. Our goal for today is going to be solving linear in a quality. And we should first um, define a linear inequality, and then we should quantify what we mean by solving one. So a linear expression is an expression of the form mx plus b. And a linear inequality occurs when you have two linear expressions separated not by an equality symbol, but by a less than symbol or a greater than symbol, or a less than or equal to symbol, or a greater than or equal to symbol. So I guess in one sense, there are four different types of inequalities, but they're all solved the same way. So we're not going to learn four different techniques. And what does a solution look like? Well, a solution to a linear inequality, as we are going to present the term today, is x on one side and a number on the other side and then in between we're going to get a less than symbol or a greater than symbol or a less than or equal to symbol or a greater than or equal or to symbol. Some of you might already be, in fact, many of you might already be familiar with interval notation. We will get to that in time, but for now our answers are just going to be x is greater than five, or x is less than or equal to two. Statements like that. And solving linear inequalities, assuming that you're comfortable with kind of pre-college algebra, is relatively straightforward. There is one sort of algorithm, if you want to call it that, that will always follow. Our method is always going to be to use addition and or subtraction. To get the x's on one side of the inequality. And we'll do examples. So if this isn't instantly making sense to you, just hold tight for a moment. 
And then the second step will always be a division or a multiplication. And it's this second step that requires a bit of comment. Let me put a big asterisk next to that step because there are rules for dividing or multiplying inequalities that are maybe not what you would expect them to be. But for now, let's take a look at this part of the method. And that part of the method is using the fact, using the fact that you can add or subtract the same number. from both sides of the inequality without changing the solution. And hopefully this fact is not a surprise to you because this is precisely the kind of thing we do when we're solving e qualities. I mean, if you have like 2x minus 7 equals 3, you can add seven to both sides of that inequality to get two X equals 10. What I'm now saying is that if instead of an equal symbol, you had, for example, 2x minus 7 is less than 3, you can perform precisely the same steps to get 2x is less than 10. So, if we have, let's now give a full blown linear inequality, something like 3x plus 4 is less than or equal to maybe not 2x, maybe 6x minus five, let's try to accomplish this first goal. Let's try to get the x's on one side, the number on the other. And what I mean by that, if it's not clear, we can subtract both sides by three x. And if we do that, our x's will now all be on the right hand side of the equality. Or Great, sir. There we go. We could subtract 
this six sets from both sides. And then once again, the X's would be by themselves on one side of the inequality. And it doesn't strictly matter which you do. I normally think it's easier to have positive X's. So if I wanted my X's to be positive, I should be subtracting away the smaller X's. I should do what I had up here in the beginning subtract the 3x from both sides and get 4 is less than or equal to 3x minus 5. And let's remember our goal here. Our goal is to get x's on one side of the inequality, and I'll expand on this. We want x's on one side of the equality, numbers on the other side of the inequality. So at the moment, we have x's and numbers mixed together, right? We have this 3x and we have this minus 5, and they're both sitting there on the right-hand side of the inequality. Once again, using addition or subtract, as appropriate, we'll get the numbers on the other side of the inequality from the x's. 9 is less than or equal to 3x. Is that clear so far to everybody? Does anybody have any questions? Yes. Why aren't we dividing the 3x so that would be x is greater than or equal to 3? That's a good idea. It's going to be the next step. Oh, we okay. Do. So going back to that, if for, I, the way I said what I said and a solution looks like is we want x by itself. Currently, we don't have x by itself. We have three times x. So our next step should be seemingly to divide by three. And that is going to be a good step. But multiplication and division are trickier than addition or subtraction. We can multiply or divide both sides of the inequality Unless we're talking about math, I'd like to hear less whispering. It's a little distracting. We can multiply, thank you, or divide both sides of the inequality by positive numbers. And that word positive is something that doesn't come up when you're working with equality. So this is something new. 
And in this particular case, that's all we need. Three is a positive number. So we can divide both sides of this inequality by three. And we'll get three is less than or equal to x. And at least for right now, that's fine as your final answer. That's how we'll write this stuff. So this sort of begs a question. What happens if you multiply an inequality by a negative number? Well, it flips the inequality, yeah? It flips the inequality, exactly as you say. If you have something like two is less than five, and you multiply both sides of this inequality by negative one, well, negative two is not less than a negative five. Negative two is greater than a negative five. It's to the right of it on the number line. So three you can multiply or divide by a negative number, but doing so flips the inequality. And let's go back um, here. I said, well, we could subtract 6x from both sides, or we could subtract 3x from both sides. And I made the decision to subtract that 3x But let's ask ourselves what happens if instead we subtracted six sets. Then we have negative three x plus four is less than or equal to negative five. We could take the fours over to the right and get negative three X is less than or equal to negative nine. And now if we want um, if we want x by itself, we need to divide by negative three. And dividing by negative three will flip that less than or equal to into a greater than or equal to. And we get the same answer. Sir, I mean, these are written a little differently, but x is greater than or equal to 3, and 3 is less than or equal to x are two different ways of saying the same thing. Huh. Sort of 
blasted right through that section. Does anybody have any questions about this before I get out the in-class work? The in-class work, let me say that one D has a typo in it, which, I'll, which I need to fix. But because of that typo, one D doesn't have a solution. So let me stop the recording.